is Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministry, where our focus is centered on the harvest of the world. And where we can't go by air, we go by prayer. We hear a lot of good messages, but is there a word from the Lord? I got good news for you, my friends. There is a word from the Lord. So stay tuned. Play close attention as we prepare now to go into the word. Somebody say, Lord, open up our eyes. So let's go here in prayer, and then we're going to get into John chapter 4. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you this morning. Oh, God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. That's what my baby said. My wife said, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Amen. I love when she says that in prayer. But, Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for how you've been speaking to us on these past Sundays, oh, God. And God, I, I feel closer to you. I pray the saints are feeling closer to you. I feel it in depthness to our relationship. Even when I'm just sometimes not my prayer life is kind of shifted to more, not more boisterous, but just sitting and meditating, reflecting, you know, on you, on your word, just allowing you to reveal yourself to me. Oh, God, so I thank you for that even shift in my prayer life, Father, on in this season that we are in together in our relationship. But, Father, I'm praying right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that you will open up our eyes. Continue, because they're being open. I know they're being open. I know the saints are experiencing things. But, Lord, continue to let our eyes be open as we go into your word, Father. For your word is the revealing of who you are. God, and yet and still, we can read this word, and yet still, oh God, things can be hidden from us. God, and we pray, God, that you allow everything to be open to us on today, everything that you showed me this morning, and I love even how you, you do it all the time, but how you were doing it on Friday night in a special way, teaching me as you talk to people. So as we read the scriptures, as we read the verses, Father, whatever you want to give us, whatever revelation you want to give us outside of the notes, Lord, you know I'm always open, Lord. Whatever you want to say, it's not about what I'm saying. It's about what you are saying. And I pray you remind the people of that, God. Oh, God, that I'm just your mouthpiece. I'm just a vessel that you are speaking through. Oh, God, the words that they hear today will not be my words, but they will be your words. Father, I pray that they will take them personal in the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll give you the glory, the praise, and the honor in Jesus' name. If you agree, say amen. If you don't agree, don't say that now. When we had a teaching on that, amen. Amen. Okay, so John chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading here at verse 10. Y'all remember we uh, went into this last week, right? How many remember that we were in John chapter 4 last week? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. The woman that was at the well. Amen. So we're going to, since this is a, a, has parts to it, a series, whatever you want to call it. I just got part one, two, three. Amen. If it get too long, I take the parts off and just, we'll officially call it a, a series. Amen. <laughs> However you want to do that. Amen. But uh, yes, yeah, so last week we, um, so I'm going to start back. Uh, where we were on last week, and we're going to get some more revelation of that. So we are talking about when Jesus met the woman at the well. That will bring us to John chapter 4, verse 10. And we stopped on what? That word uh, when he said, if thou knewest, right? So let's read here, uh, four, chapter 4, verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is, that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have acts of him, and he would have given thee living water. And what did we go to that definition last week? It said, uh, of course, that word newest or new, was it derived from the word what? No. It means to know. Amen? Amen. Beware. It means to beware of through what? Observation inquiry or information it means also to realize and to understanding that's what jesus was basically saying to her woman well, I mean, if you understood who it was you understand that was standing before you you would have acts of me of living water y'all got that right the woman said for him verse 11 sir thou has nothing to draw with and the well is deep for whence then hast thou that living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, 
which gave us the well and drank that of himself and his children and his cattle? Look at that question. Amen. Man, I am. I'm one who created Jacob, you know? <laughs> Amen. He, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Y'all see that? And somebody say amen. amen. Now he was talking about the spirit. Amen. amen. Let's go ahead and get the, the verse. Uh, let's go to John chapter 7 verse 37. And we're going to break this down with scripture. I'm so afraid now not to stick to the word. Amen. <laughs> amen. Y'all y'all know me, right? So let's, let's let y'all see this in scripture because he's talking about the spirit. So that'll let us know here. We need to turn to John chapter 7 verse 30 verses 37. Through 39, and we're going to get into the message, but we want to stop there. He said, one, if you knew who I was, amen, amen. And my question is, how, do, how many of us really know Jesus, amen? Even in the natural, you know, you can see somebody that you work with. They could be in a cubicle five, you know, spaces down, and you, know, you see them in Walmart. You say, oh, I know her. You understand? But do, you don't really know her. You understand? Now you see the different levels in knowing, yeah, you understand. And but we know Jesus to a certain point, but we got to go to another. Somebody said we got to go to another level in Him. We got to go to another level in Jesus Christ, Amen. So I just want to bring this thing out about the Spirit, John chapter seven, verse thirty-seven. It say, "In the last day," somebody said, "In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying." If any man thirst, let him come unto who? And drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's why sometimes you'll see, I'll be praying for people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'll probably tell my wife to lay hands on a woman's stomach. I'll lay my hand on, 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 her, on her hand. Amen. Because we want to do things. Jesus in order. Amen. And I say, Father, out of our belly, let rivers of living water begin to flow. Amen. We'll be praying for people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Somebody say Holy Ghost. There's power in that. You understand? Holy Ghost. That's the power of God. That's the spirit of God in Jesus' name. Like his, he's just so powerful just saying his name. Hmm? He's all about power. Amen. He's all about witness. But it says, verse 39, but this spake he of what? Mm -hmm. But this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. I just want to bring that point out, amen, when I said that was the spirit. I'm telling you, this is the end time. Preacher, you listen to me right now on radio, amen. This is a time we got to stick to the word. Amen. We got to stick to this word. Now, let's dive on in here with my real message at. Amen. Let's go here to John chapter 11. We're still in John. Let's go to John chapter number 11. And we're finna get ready and dive on into it. Thank God for the, the, the man who does our editing and stuff like that. Because uh, we're going to be going all the way to verse 44. Amen. 44 in John chapter 11. But we're going to start here at verse number 1. Are y'all ready? John chapter 11, verse number one. Remember now the topic of the message is, Lord, open our eyes. Somebody say it again. Lord, open our eyes. And when we begin to read this, uh, we're going to be talking about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. But I want you to think about all the stuff that happened before he raised Lazarus from the dead. Amen. Pay attention to this. Amen. Just think about now, you, you Bible readers, just think about the miracles and things that he, he did before uh, he got to this particular situation. Amen. And how the people seeing this, they observed this, they, they knew this, they heard uh, the miracles that Jesus had already wrought. Amen. But I want you to see the state of the mind of the people uh, when it comes to knowing what he's capable of. 
at, at this point in his ministry, you would think, amen, they would, they would come to the conclusion, yes this, yes, this is the son of God. Nothing is impossible unto him. This is God. This is the one that, that Isaiah talked about. This is the one that Daniel talked about. This is the one that Zechariah talked about. This is the one that Moses talked about. This is the one. Huh? And it, because they had some of the old, you know, they had some of the old scripts. Amen. They had some of the, the prophets. They knew the prophets. Amen. But so, now listen, now you got to see now what we're getting ready to embark on now. He's getting ready to do something. He probably, I, I'm not a, a real Bible scholar. I don't, I don't have everything in chronolog chronological order. Amen. I don't know if he had touched the buyer or whatever, but he had done some miracles to the point where you would know, hey, this is God. God is with him. Amen. And whatever he acts of God, it's going to be done. Amen. They should be to this point by now. Amen. Just the same as us. We should be to that point by now. Amen. Say amen again. Amen. We should be to that point that we know that nothing, not only we know, that we, we believe it. That nothing is impossible unto him. We should have a different attitude. We've all been in situations. We believe God for something and it didn't happen the way we want it to happen. But if we got the revelation we're supposed to have, we, that don't phase us. We move on to the next thing. Amen. If we got a true revelation of who he is, if we have not only a revelation of who he is, but a revelation and an understanding on how he operates, how he moves, of his character. The only way you can know God the Father, amen, and know the Son, and know the Holy Ghost, you got to be in the Word. And really to know how God operates, the mindset of God, you got to go to the Old Testament. Can't just be a New Testament read. It all goes together. The Bible complements itself. Amen. That's why all the prophets, you know, but all the prophets, what did they do? They pointed unto Jesus Christ. All the prophets, they pointed to Jesus. They spoke about this. So when he came and manifested himself to the earth, to the T, how the scripture said he would be, amen, you would think, man, that's a no-brainer. And then you had the 12 that were walking all right along with him and you could just say well maybe he chose not to open his eyes but why in certain instances that he would get upset with them he, he was to the point to he what was that was last week what, what was that philip he said have i not been so long time with you so that lets us know that he expected him to know him in another way to the point where they were in their relationship or his discipleship. So he did expect them to, knew, to know more than they knew at that time. Amen. Amen. And we backed that up with scripture on last week. We're going to see this again in the scriptures on this morning. Amen. So let's get right on into it. Verse number one. John chapter 11 verse number one. It said, now a certain man was sick. Named Lazarus of Bethany. The town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Martha that anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Uh, therefore, his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he, he whom thou lovest is sick. So they had a relationship, right? See it? Uh-huh. When Jesus heard that he, when he heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. That the son of God might be glorified thereby. Y'all should got a revelation for yourself on that. Some situations you in. Amen. And when you know, I know we all know this, this, uh, this, this story about that. He waited on purpose. Amen. He, 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 he waited to the situation, got into an impossible state on purpose for they could see the glory of God. Could it be that your situation is just for you to see the glory of God? Huh? Sometimes you seem like, man, this is just over with. It ain't going to be done. Who said that? <laughs> well, then I preach a message. Who told you to stop believing God? Y'all forgot that one? Who told you to stop believing God? We, we, my son went to the man that was uh, in a situation uh, for 30 and 8 years. Somebody say, who told you to stop believing God? If you was that man, you'd be like, man, this ain't, this just, 
just it's a wrap. It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna be. But God, He let that man stay there for Jesus to show up. That man was there on purpose, man. You know, God set that up. Knowing God, like I know God, and even reading the scripture, he did. That was on purpose. It was for a set time. Sometimes your miracle or, or whatever you believe in God for is for a set time. Don't stop believing God. Amen. Especially sometimes when you know God is giving you something. God has birthed something in you. Don't give up on that dream. Amen. God has shown me some things, man. You understand? Hey. I ain't going to stop believing God. As a matter of fact, I know what's going to happen. Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministry. Perhaps you are blessed by the broadcast that you just viewed. If so, we want to hear from you. We want you to dial this number that's at the bottom of your screen right now because somebody's going to be waiting on just your call. The number is area code 904-713-3609. Again, it's area code 904-713-3609. Until next time, we'll be waiting to hear from you.